This particular night changed everything. Like everything changed for everybody. My grandma, myself, my child, my entire family. This particular night changed everything. First of all, I want to apologize. I want to apologize for the wait. Um, the past two weeks, I kind of had like a lot going on. Like y'all, look, I think y'all be forgetting. Like a bitch work a real life nine to five. Like, wait, well, really, I actually work eight to five. But still, like, I think y'all be fucking forgetting sometimes. And so I gotta kind of like remind y'all in a way, um, because I know y'all be expecting my videos, and I'm trying my best like if as y'all can see the last two story times were consistent but this one i had sick babies and i had to work and just a lot of stuff going on so but whatever i decided why not just make this a story time movie because bitch it's it's a, it's gonna be a, it's a story time movie because bitch like look how long it is so don't be alarmed if you think the first part of the video is gonna be over it's not as short as you think it's gonna be okay so just keep watching because this is a story time movie as you can see down below so don't stop watching this video until the video just stops until that bitch say zero 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 left okay i wanted to make it up to you guys so hopefully um this is good enough by having a story time movie in the middle of the series mind y'all the series is not over so y'all getting a story time movie in the middle of a series that ain't even over so just imagine all of the tea that's gonna come after the story time movie so y'all think it's about to get real this story time bitch is about to look how about y'all just sit back and relax and watch let me just shut the fuck up okay the last story time i left off um just talking about i was in an interview for um like medicaid because i had um went down near to louisiana uh, with my grandma for a little while. So um, the case worker began to ask me about my income and um, I put on an application that I didn't have any um, income coming in because you know that was the truth or at least I thought it was because I, I mean I'm 15 at this time. My ass probably should be working because I'm pregnant but I wasn't. Um, she begins to tell me well um I know that until you're, you're getting a such and such amount dollar social security check a month. I asked her to kind of like repeat herself because I was like trying to make sure that I I, I heard what she was saying, you know. Uh, she repeated herself and it was it was what I what I thought I heard. And for some of you who guessed that in the comments on my last video, because I actually had a guess which I thought that the lady was gonna say, and most of you got it right, so good job. Whenever she told me, I'm like, oh man, I'm I, my mom never told me that. I'm like, I I promise if I knew about it, I would have you know mentioned it, but like I I didn't know about that. I'm not receiving this money or getting this money. I ended up getting approved for the medicated or whatever. I believe it was the next day, I think, I had asked my mom, I was like, well, um, I just applied for Medicaid and they told me that I'm getting this check every month for Social Security because, you know, it's for my dad. And mom was like, oh yeah, you know, yeah, you, 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 get, you get a check every month, you know, but, you know, I've, I've been using that towards like groceries and, and you know, and rent and you know all of the stuff that you need like okay don't get me wrong like she didn't have me like out on my ass and, you know no clothes no nothing like you know how you go school shopping almost every year like i didn't do that she would always spend most of her money by getting rough rider stuff that she wanted like electronics and watches and stuff like like she would get her whatever she wanted so and also i think she was paying her car note because rough rider had a car but it wasn't paid off and Rough Rider didn't have a job, and I know nobody down where she stayed, like, her, her family didn't really fuck with her like that, so, I mean, they fuck with her, but, like, they didn't really, like, fuck with her, so, I'm pretty sure mom was paying her card out as well. I told her, I'm like, well, you know, I'm about to have a baby, I could use that, that would definitely help me, so she said, well, I'll start giving you a little bit here and there. She just said some, she didn't tell me how much, you know, it was just, I'll start giving you some. At the time, I was 16 weeks pregnant, finally got approved for Medicaid, so I was finally able to see a doctor. Um, So my very first appointment with the doctor, I was 16 weeks pregnant, Um, and that same day, I also got an ultrasound, and I also was able to see the gender of the baby. The baby came out to be a girl. At this time, me and Sh Shorty, we were still together off and on. We were really, really kind of having a lot of issues. I remember, I'm um, having a lot of arguments with him while I was in Lafayette. My mom and I had a pre-planned trip to go to the Bahamas the August of this year. Um, this is August of 2011. My mom's birth father is from the Bahamas and he lives in the Bahamas. So uh, I have a lot of family out there. He has like a lot of other daughters. So, you know, I have a lot of aunts and 
and whatnot. August, I went back home. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know like how things like we, me and my mom didn't talk about referred to like me and my mom really didn't talk that much while I was in Lafayette. Period. Like I mean, we talked here and there. She'll check up on me, see how I was doing or whatever. But we didn't really talk. You know, she, my mom picked me up from the bus station and. We actually approached the apartment, the same two-bedroom apartment that we were in in the previous story time, and everything was gone. Rough Rider's bed was gone. Rough Rider's things were gone. I mean, Rough Rider was just gone. Like, she was nowhere to be found. And um, my mom ended up telling me she had moved back to her home state. At this time, I'm like, hell yeah, cool. Maybe this is like the perfect time for me and my mom to finally have the relationship that I've been wanting for years. Like since I was at this point, since I was nine years old, like whenever I turned, whenever I was nine, that's when Rough Rider first, you know, entered my life. And um, that's when I lost my mom pretty much because she spent all her time with her. She focused more on her than she did me so coming in the house saying that she was gone it was just like a relief I was like really really happy because I'm like wow this is like this is perfect like we're about to go on this trip to the Bahamas like this is the perfect time for us to just just breathe fresh another another scenery be around new people be around new new things and and just you know a breath of fresh air so we went to the bahamas and um it was a pretty pretty cool trip um at this point i was showing a little bit yeah i was, I was showing i was showing because for me to be like even though i wasn't like i wasn't like big for the gestation that i was that i was like for six months i looked like i was probably like three three months or something like that my mom didn't tell anyone um, any of my family in the Bahamas that I was pregnant, they kind of found out um, <laughs> because, like I said, I was showing a little bit and by me being like such a small girl, like it was so noticeable. I kind of felt like my mom was ashamed or whatever, like ashamed of, of the fact that I was pregnant because I remember her having to tell her boss, I think she had to take off work or something to take me to the doctor. She seemed really, really like ashamed to tell her boss. I overheard her like talking. I don't know if she was talking to me or she was talking to somebody on the phone, but she was like, yeah, like she was really, really cool about it. And, and yeah, she was surprisingly like happy and supportive. And I'm like, why is that such a big deal that she was happier that she was that a stranger was happy the fact that i knew knew my mom and my mom didn't really like she was ashamed of a lot like she wasn't really really like a, a open person she wasn't too happy about the fact that she had to share that her 15 year old daughter was pregnant i'm not saying you have to be out and open with it but you're not saying anything about me being pregnant so it's like i feel like i gotta kind of hide it too so i was feeling like you know i had like um this little this little um purse would that like it go around you y'all know what i'm talking about but like i would kind of like try to hide you know my stomach i felt like she was ashamed of it so that naturally made me ashamed of it but i ignored it i mean i thought about it and it kind of like hurt me in a way but um i was like well maybe i mean i understand like i, I understand that's not really something you should want to share with the world that your baby is having a baby like i understand that but then it's just like the way that she came about like it's like i feel like it was if it was me if i was putting her shoes if it was my daughter like i would embrace that shit. like yeah like we this is what happened but hey we're gonna deal with it like i'm not gonna be afraid after the bahamas trip we got back home and um that's when i was entering my junior year in high school i know there's a change in her behavior she never stopped talking to rough rider like even though rough rider was going living with us she would always be on the phone with her they were like that whenever they were, we were living with her my mama would talk to her on her way to work and mama would talk to her on her way coming home from work they're, they're best friends like best friends talk on the phone a lot right why y'all gotta talk on the phone so much and y'all live together and then so whenever she moved out i wasn't surprised that this was happening like they were on the phone all the time like from the morning to the time she gets off work to the time she gets home cooks dinner in a tub with her earpiece on like she would always be fucking talking to her at this point i realized okay but it's like she's still here in a way it's like it don't really feel no different because I noticed my mama always would be locked up in her room. It's like her, this is what her pattern would be. She'll get up like 6.30 in the morning to be to work, um, come home from work at about 5.30, 6 o'clock. A lot of the times whenever Rough Rider was living with us, she would cook. Like she would come home and cook. But I noticed whenever Rough Rider left, she wasn't really doing that anymore. Like she was just, just like lazy, like the 
the house would stay dirty longer than they would usually do the clothes would stay unwashed i just noticed a change in her behavior i noticed that and so it got to the point where like she would come home taking sleeping pills and drinking you know before she go to bed like rough rider might as well have just stayed here like what is and i could have just stayed in lafayette like what is the point i really really thought that the, the purpose for her making rough rider leave well i don't know i don't really know how it came about i don't know if rough rider said she wanted to leave or i don't know if my mama asked her to leave i don't fucking know don't really give a fuck but whatever it is she was gone and i just felt like wow like i said earlier this is my time to shine bitch like this is my time to finally have the relationship that i wanted with my mom like i don't have my dad can't have a relationship with my father because my father's not here like he's 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 dead like i i can't this that's never gonna ha happen he's never gonna be here like he just he's, he's gone like i'm never gonna have that relationship so the only person that i have left is my mom and it's like what the fuck like you are so you're more into having a relationship with your friend a, a bitch that you met at church a bitch who don't like your child a bitch who seems like she just in competition with your child my nigga like what what is it about her and it's like whenever i realized that the that her being gone really made no difference in anything like period i was just like fuck it i give up like i don't i don't <laughs> Like, it's, it's nothing that I can do. Like, me getting pregnant, ha telling her I don't like Rough Rider, having Rough Rider move out the house, and none of that fucking work, none of that fucking help. Like, it, it was nothing. It was pointless. Like, it was useless. Months passed, and um, eventually, I had my daughter. I gave birth to my daughter January 8th, 2012 um my mom was there I, I was a mom my life i felt changed forever and uh, well my life did change forever when i had my daughter that was the first time in a while i've seen my mom truly happy <laughs> i mean truly happy i know y'all looking at me like girl what like that don't even fucking make sense me and my mom had routine right i would have my daughter monday through friday because my mom worked Monday through Friday, and then on the weekends, my mama would have my daughter. Now, I know y'all probably is also thinking, like, what do you mean y'all are living in the same house? But, in other words, my daughter slept with my mom on the weekends, and my daughter slept with me on the weekdays. And so, um, sometimes I go out on the weekend or whatever, um, because I knew, my was, I knew my mom was gonna keep her. So, she was really supportive whenever it comes to that, I'm not gonna lie. We did struggle a little bit the month that I had my daughter. Um, I had a baby shower in Lafayette. I'm skipping over this, but I had a, I had a small baby shower in Lafayette. It was mostly of my grandma's like church members and stuff, so I didn't really know anybody. But I got a, I got a few things, but I didn't get enough, I guess. And so some of the things um, my mom's um, church members or it's my mom's coworkers, the same coworkers she was afraid and ashamed to tell I was pregnant, they helped her out a lot or helped me out a lot and gave me some things. Um, but for some reason, my mom couldn't afford rent in, in the month of January 2012. Keep in mind, she was still sending Rough Rider money. Um, I'm pretty sure she sent her money probably every time she got paid. And I know this because she would always be going to MoneyGram, Western Union, and I've, I would always hear her talking to her, like, about it. We were actually about to get evicted in January, but I don't know what happened a miracle happened bitch i don't fucking know um she was able to pay the rent but i say this to say that check that she told me my check that she told me she was gonna give me i didn't see she gave me 200 dollars out of that she gave me 200 dollars the month that we went to the bahamas i didn't see that money at all after that a whole mom a, i got a whole child <laughs> to fend for it now and still didn't see it so I gave up. I wasn't about to keep hounding her for the money. I, I just gave up. Like, I know y'all probably, like, thinking, like, Angie, you probably should have fought harder for that. I know. I probably should should have. But it, it's my mom. Like, I don't, I don't, I guess she needed. Fuck it. I'll go get a job. And that's what I did. March 2012. My very first job, actually. And it was at Taco Bell. And, and by the way, this particular Taco Bell location is closed. I don't know why the fuck they closed that shit down. But, um, it was on 1960. I'm um, in Jones Road. 
And if y'all live in Houston, Texas, on the north side, y'all probably know around the area that I'm talking about. I was making $7.25, bitch, like, minimum wage as fuck, but I was happy about my job because I knew, like, okay, I don't have to depend on my mom for diapers. I don't have to dep depend on my mom for the necessities that me and my baby, th that me and my baby needs. Like, I don't have to. And so that was my goal. Like, she's not giving me my check, so I'm, I'm about to go out there and work for it. And so at this time, um, eventually, whenever I turned 17, I had started working at this other um, place. This is a restaurant, actually. Um, it was called Crazy Cajun Seafood, and this place is actually still open. I'll post a picture of it. It's on West and Jones Road around the area. Um, but I was a hostess there, and this is whenever the restaurant first opened. Like, I was there for the the grain opening and stuff like that of that particular location and so um all the host is there so what i would do i would work at taco bell in the morning early in the morning and then leave at like two three o'clock and then i'll go work go straight to the restaurant and be working until they close and so i did that i was paying my god sister um who also lived in houston at the time well she still lives in houston but um, i was paying her 125 dollars um, a week to watch my daughter while I was working so um, sometimes my, my mom would pitch in the agreement was for us to go half on it but that ended up not happening so I always ended up um, paying you know for the full week which is okay like I mean that's my daughter like I need to do that like I'm not expecting her to cover that so as the months went on I'm 17 at this time I noticed my mom getting in more and more debt like I noticed certain things started to get cut off like the cable sometimes would get cut off or our, the phone sometimes would get cut off like I noticed a lot of that going on and let me tell y'all my mama didn't have no regular regular ass job she was making over $21 an hour and I know this because she told me and because I've saw her checks before but she was making some good money honey like some good ass money but she was always broke and so i'm thinking i'm pretty sure it's because she's sending the money to a uh, rough rider and stuff like i'm pretty fucking sure that's the reason but i didn't say anything about it you know that ain't my motherfucking business like as long as i'm able to go to you know come in this bitch and sleep at night and get up in the morning and go to work like i'm good i remember um my very first year i got my income taxes it's my when i was 17 i had to file my very first income tax at 17 because obviously I was a parent at the time and I was working. So $3,400, literally $3,400, y'all. My mom knew this. Because why do I have to hide it from my mom? And plus she kind of directed me to, she kind of showed me how to file my own taxes because I hadn't done it. And so um, she did. And so she knew how much money I was getting back. And so I got my money um, a couple weeks later. And my mom asked me to borrow $500. And I gave it to her, like, with no questions asked. Like, I, I gave it to her. She was supposed to pay me back. And she, she didn't pay me back for her. But that's besides the point. You know, me, I'm not going to, I'm, look, I'm nice. But at this time, I'm nice. You know, I wasn't about to hound my mom for the money. I'm just like, whatever, maybe she really, really needed Or maybe she really just struggling. Because obviously, I saw how bad she was struggling at this time. My grandma ended up having some hard times of herself, of her own, rather. And um, she and my mom were kind of discussing, like, you know, how they could kind of help each other. And so um, this is whenever my grandpa was starting to, he started to be, get sick. Like, that's when after, a little bit after he had his first stroke. So my grandma really was, he, she had to be his caretaker, you know, for the majority of the time. So um, they came up with a plan to move to Houston. And whenever I say they, I mean, my grandma, my grandfather, and my aunt. They came from Lafayette to Houston and moved in with us. <laughs> and we still in this two-bedroom ass apartment, y'all. Let's not get it fucked up. We still in this two-bedroom apartment. My mom ended up giving up her room and she came in my room and it was kind of like uncomfortable. Well, it, bitch, it was uncomfortable. Like, you my mama, but I don't really like you. Like, <laughs> no, like for real. Like, it was just uncomfortable. It wasn't that I didn't like her like that. It was just that you're my mom. Like, I, like, I like to be on, on my phone at night and shit. Like, y'all know how it is. So, it wasn't really like an ideal thing. And, I, and at this point, I was in a relationship with Freddie. And so, you know, I had my own thing going on. And I didn't really want to share my privacy with my mom. So I eventually moved out. <laughs> um, I told my, I lied to my mom that I moved 
out with my friend um but that wasn't the case i was actually moved in with freddie i just didn't want to tell her because i was 17 at this time like i was still like kind of young and so legally my mama could say bitch no the fuck you're not about to live with him like you're not even 18 yet but it was like literally a couple months before i turned 18 but i still just didn't i didn't feel comfortable with her knowing so um i lied about where i was living for a while for a couple months she begged me to leave my daughter there like she was like don't take her like you know leave her with me don't take my my veil like that's, that's what she'd say my veil because my, my daughter name is nevea so she would like call her my veil so um, i was uh, i agreed to it i'm like okay cool i would get her uh, a couple days out the week and she would have her a couple days out the week pretty much like that i started noticing like her behavior changed a lot again and so like whenever my grandma and them first moved in with her she was kind of like relieved in a way because she's like you know i finally have help but um she her behavior started to change again and she started like every time i would go visit like she would just be stuck in a room like i don't know she would just be like in bed all the time i'm like why is she in bed like she really honestly seemed depressed and she probably was depressed i just didn't know at the time she started uh, drinking a lot like my grandma would kind of like I'll, like you know bring me to the side sometimes whenever i'll come visit and be like you know what you think you think your mama's okay like you know she'd be drinking a lot and she don't really come out the room most of the time like she'll just be locked up in the room and i'm kind of concerned about her and so i told her straight up i said well i think it's because rough rider is away like ever since rough rider has been gone like her behavior has like changed like it's not the same and so i honestly think that's what it is and so and it probably also has to do with the fact that she you know in depth as well and and she got a good good job but it's like where, where is this money going you know after this point that's when things officially started to crumble between my mom and i go well, up not only just between my mom and i but my mom my grandma um and the rest of my family um that's when my mother's behavior really really starts to change that's when i really really start to realize that she was gone and I like she her her my mom was who she used to be she was just completely gone and I was never gonna have her again like she was never gonna come back and that's gonna be discussed in my next video because this is all I'm gonna talk about we interrupt our program to bring you this important message <laughs> I bet you thought this video was over but it's not <laughs> As I was saying, the first part of the story time will be left off of me discussing um, after I moved out of my mom's house and stuff like that. So we're just going to go ahead and continue. Thank you so much for continuing to watch with me. Um, and thank you so much for continuing to watch if you're continuing to watch this video. And didn't think that the video was over because, like, obviously it's not over. So um, I hope y'all enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. So I left off. Um, I was explaining to y'all how i moved out um my mom whenever i moved out my mom didn't know that i actually moved out with freddie i'm she thought i moved out with my uh one of my best friends at the time she thought i moved in with her but i didn't i did eventually ended up moving in with her but just not at this point so um i moved out and my mom my mom had like my mom had like a really really close attachment to my daughter and so um and i don't know like still to this day i i, don't, I mean i kind of got like my speculation as to why she was so attached to her um uh, maybe because she i mean i was i'm the only child from mom maybe she felt like she was starting over or something i i don't know what it really was but what i do know is that um she didn't want me to take her like she she didn't want me to take her with me whenever I moved out. So she was like, I mean, can she stay here? Like, you know, you could come come by and get her anytime. I just really want her to be here with me. I agreed to it, which I shouldn't have agreed to, but I agreed to it um, simply because, like, I just wanted to be sure that everything at where I was living at currently was settled, you know, and I had everything. Because we, we didn't really have any much furniture. We had, like, a bed, but, it, you know, I wanted, like, my daughter to have her own, her own privacy and stuff like that. So I agreed to my daughter being with my mom and, you know, and me being where I was. However, I would always go to my mom's house and see my daughter, like, almost not daily, every other day. So, 
Um, I did that because I felt like, you know, well, she kind of seemed already sad, which I really didn't understand why she seemed sad for me to be leaving. But she kind of already seemed sad at the fact that I was leaving. Maybe about a month or so passed by. Um, me and Freddie were going through a really, really hard time. I had just turned 18 and honestly, y'all, I didn't really want to be in a committed relationship anymore. At this point, I was engaged to be married. Um, we were, we didn't have like a date or anything like that, but like he bought me a ring or whatever and we were supposed to be getting married eventually. But that didn't work out because like literally on my 18th birthday, I don't know, I just got a fucking epiphany and I'm like, bitch, the fuck? I'm not about to do this shit. Like I'm too motherfucking young, so. <laughs> I decided to break things off. Freddie was really, really hurt about that. Um, that's like kind of a whole nother story time as to like how that actually went down. Uh, I don't really want to get into that, but we broke up. And so whenever we broke up, the best friend that my mom thought I was originally living with, that's I eventually moved in with them. Now, between the time of me breaking up with Freddie and me moving in with um, Ashley, I think that's what I named her in my story time. So Ashley, between me moving in with her, I moved back in with my mom for a little while. So I was there briefly. And so I was kind of there to experience the, some of the things that, my, like some of the habits my mom had picked up since I had been gone. I noticed she was like always in bed. And mind you, at this point we were, we were only, we were only living in a two bedroom apartment. Eventually my mom and my grandma upgraded that same exact apartment complex to a three bedroom. Um, because at this time it was my mom, my grandma, my grandfather, my aunt and her son. So it was like three different sets of grown adults that needed their own room. So eventually they moved, but at this point they were still in that apartment. So my mom was sleeping in my room. So where what used to be my room, it, it kind of became me and my mom's room because my mom gave up her room to her mom and my grandfather so i eventually moved out um into the apartment with ashley i didn't really stay at my mom's house too long it didn't take us much it didn't take us long to get an apartment and get approved and stuff like that so i had moved out again i think i told my mom that i was there for a little while i didn't actually tell her that i broke up with freddie and that i, I don't think i actually got into that she probably she found that out later but um i didn't get into that at the moment at this time i was still 18 it's just like my the point in my life where i feel like i live my best life and don't need to live no more <laughs> because at this point in my life i was just being 18 doing what an 18 year old would do um a lot of partying a lot of drinking a lot of smoking um a lot of all of that i got to the point where i kind of lost myself in a way because like the purpose of me breaking up with freddie was to kind of like do my own thing become my own woman because at this point i was 18 and i had been with freddie since i was 17 and so i kind of felt like he was molding me into a woman and i kind of wanted to mold myself into a woman and so um that was another reason why i left because i just wanted to kind of be on my own and wanted to you know i didn't want to be in a committed relationship i just turned 18 like Bitch, I can now I can buy a pack of guards without, you know, worrying about a fake ID or getting somebody else to buy a pack of guards. Like, I was thinking about shit like that because, I mean, I needed a pack of guards, bitch, I was smoking and shit. So, like, I would be, I would think about stuff like that. Like, okay, I'm my, my, I'm my own person. I don't need nobody. Like, I mean, I didn't have a car at that time, um, but I still was making it work because, and this is a whole nother story time too, but Ashley ended up, um, getting into a relationship with one of my male best friends at the time. We have been best friends since like seventh grade at this time. And so, um, which is funny because he's Gabe's friend now and you know, that's just funny. But anyways, we went to middle school together. And so as we got older, we, you know, still hang out. And so my male best friend met Ashley, which is my, who was my, my roommate for that time. And so they, you know, linked up and ended up fucking getting together so they together well they were together at the time so we moved in so whenever i say we i mean me ashley and um what could i call him let's call him let's call him k i don't know fuck it k so k we moved in with him and so they at this point they were in a relationship and i was single but you know I'm doing my own thing still, but we, we still hung out. We still club together and stuff like that. Um, I was in an apartment, in our apartment, you know, the apartment that me, um, Ashley, and Kay lived in. But long story short, and if you want this story time, I'll do a story time on this particular situation, but I'll just briefly touch it real quick. I was depressed. I was suicidal. Um, the dude, the, the guy who I was dealing with at the time, um, he had some 
prescribed pills and to this day I don't know what type of pills they were. All I knew was there, there were pain pills and the milligramage was like 600 or something like that. I just remember feeling like I just wanted to go to sleep and didn't want to wake up. I, I was at a point in my life where I felt so long, so low. Like, I mean, my best friends who were living with me, like they're in the relationship, they have their own issues, so they can't like be there for me. So it's like I only have myself. Different things that I was dealing with, just everything just took a toll on me and I attempted to overdose. I was just really, really sleepy. I could feel that I was on some type of drug. It didn't affect me like I thought it would and I wanted it to so bad. I believe I want to say between six and eight pills, okay? Again, I don't I don't remember what it was. I know it wasn't no Tylenol, it wasn't no, no shit like that. It was definitely some strong ass pain pills. I just kind of felt like I wanted to hide from everything and I was just like, uh, I'm, I'm 18, I'm doing all this drinking, I'm doing all this smoking, I'm doing all of this and that, but I'm not getting nowhere in life. Like I just felt like at my lowest at this point. I didn't have my daughter at the time. Like she wasn't there with me 100% of the time. Like she spent a lot of her time with my mom and so it's like, that's another thing. Like I didn't have anything to really like, I didn't have anything to put me in my place. Like I didn't have anything to really just make me do what I'm supposed to be doing. Mind y'all, I was only in this apartment for three months. I wasn't in this apartment for long. We signed a year lease, but I ended up leaving, um, which is another story time. Too. One of my friends that I used to hang with did tattoos. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's like, I wanted to feel pain at this point. Like I just wanted to feel something and and y'all, if y'all watching this, like, don't, this is not a way to feel. Like, don't, if you feeling like this, talk to somebody. Do something. Don't just feel like this and not do anything about it like I did. Like, I just didn't, I didn't talk to nobody about it. I didn't do anything. No, no one knew what the fuck I was going through. Went to this guy's house to get a tattoo, right? Um, which is one of the friends that, I'm just, that I was just telling you about. I went, and whenever I realized that these pills wasn't fucking doing shit to me, I'm like, damn, I just took all these pills. Ain't shit happening, so fuck it. I'm, I don't want to be stuck in the house, just depressed. So, well, I was depressed, but I didn't want to be stuck in the house any longer. So I decided to to find a way to go to this person's house. And so, um, I don't, he don't really deserve a name. He's not really relevant, but he's the same person who did my tattoos whenever I was 14. Um, I went to his house to get another tattoo. These are the tattoos that I'm talking about. Trash as fuck. This is another sword time too that I'm not gonna really just get into. But bitch, I caught staph infection. Like, girl, I didn't caught a whole infection trying to fucking be hard, trying to get a tattoo. Bitch didn't caught a whole infection. Do you understand me? Like I still got marks from like the the wound. If you don't know what staph infection is, Google it. Um, but pretty much it was like different bumps that were like infected, I guess, I don't know. And I had to, I ended up going to the hospital. Bitch, I thought I had an STD or some shit. I'm like, bitch, wait, I know STDs ain't supposed to be like, like on your arm, like, <laughs> cause at that time I wasn't even fucking. So I'm like, bitch, I ain't fucking. So what the, what the fuck is going on? Girl, I went to the hospital or whatever and they told me it was staph infection. And it clearly it was because he used bat needle. That's why people, you don't get tattoos. So I'm not even gonna go into that. If you, y'all want that to be a step of story time because I got a lot of more, lot more details than that. Uh, for the story time, then I'll get into that. Let me know in the comment section if y'all want to hear about that. This is about my mom, but I have to tell y'all the different things that I went through in between. That way y'all can kind of understand why I am where I am to this day. So a few months later, this is when I decided to move. Now, the reason why I decided to move out is because I was no longer happy. I felt like me and my roommates wasn't seeing eye to eye anymore. Like, mind y'all, this is a lesson. Don't ever hook your two best friends up together because you're going to lose them. They ain't, they ain't going to never be your best friend no more. You let them get with your best friend and get with any, any of your friends, then you just lost them. You know, shit happened for a reason because come to find out, like, they ended up getting married later down the line. I mean, they're not together anymore, but that's her story. So I ended up rekindling with Freddie, okay? Me and Freddie had took a break three months, you know, I caught off the engagement, all that. I made my way back to his house, long story short, because like, like I said, things wasn't working. We weren't seeing eye to eye. I felt like it was a big mistake. I felt like I should've stayed where I was. Whenever I look at it now, like I, I don't regret it because I needed that experience. Like those three months when, you know, me and Freddie wasn't together, like I lived my life to the fullest to the point where like I look, I look back at that shit now and I'm like, girl, been there done that i didn't tell anybody i was moving out um it was kind of a situation that happened and then the next day i told freddie that i didn't i no longer wanted to be there and he came and helped me pack my stuff like i didn't really have that much i mean i had like a bed and stuff there but i ain't gonna fuck about that baby because at this point a whole nother bitch that had been in the bed you know again another story time go go to that story time that i was telling you about I took my clothes and left that bitch rent was coming up and 
I was, you know, and I shouldn't have did this, but I wasn't about to pay that rent because I felt like it was fake as fuck at the time. Like, I wasn't trying to pay nobody's rent. Like, y'all won't be fake, fuck y'all be fake. Pay that shit, so <laughs> don't do this, y'all. Kay and Ashley, they all went to my mama house and basically just did a tell-off. Angie been doing, it. Angie been drinking, she been smoking, she been doing drugs, she been overdosing, all this type of shit. They just told her all type of stuff and i don't really know exactly everything that they told her because i wasn't there i'm just going by what my mama said and then going by what ashley told me because like years it's been years and we we grew up from that and we talked about it like we still cool to well me and ashley rather we still cool to this day so she had told me about it or whatever we 18 childish as fuck you know whatever but my mama ended up talking to me about it the next day um, and I was kind of avoiding her because, like, I already knew what it was. Because, like, I mean, I don't really, I didn't have that relationship with my mama to even talk to her. So, at this point, I'm thinking, like, I'm 18. Like, it was not the first talk about, like, don't ask me, don't question me about anything. Like, it's my life. Like, you wasn't worried about me then, so don't worry about me now. That's kind of the type of shit that I was on. But I did end up talking to her, and she kind of briefly discussed what was said, and I denied it. Um, I denied everything, even though I was lying. But I didn't, like, I denied it. Like, I just fucking denied it everything that she said that they said i said nope not true mm -mm, nope mm -mm, nope 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 in actuality most of the things that she told me that they said were true but i just didn't want my mama to know um well not that i didn't want her to know i just didn't care to let her know because it's like i, I didn't feel like i had the relationship to let her know hey yeah mom i was feeling depressed this day so i decided to take six seven eight pills because i just wanted to sleep I didn't want to wake up. I didn't like. I didn't feel like I had that type of relationship to even have that conversation with my mom. Anyway, so she kind of brushed it off. After I denied it, she brushed it off. She didn't really ask me any further questions about it. She, you know how like up here and have that like feeling like okay, something's not right with my child. Like not being truthful with me. Like my mama didn't have that, and if she did, she didn't express that. And so that's probably another thing that I look back at now. It's like you didn't even really try. Like. Stranger, stranger ass kids came to your house and tell you about your daughter overdosing or trying to overdose and you didn't even hear about it. I kind of felt like, damn, like she didn't even really try. Like, yeah, I know I denied it, but I don't know. I guess maybe, maybe that was foolish of me to think that she was going to dig deeper or maybe not. But it's like, I know me, it doesn't matter how old my, my child is. She could be 30 years old and somebody tells me some stuff about her. I'm going to be like, yo, what's going on? And if she denies that shit, I'm going to, as a parent, I'm going to know. Like, depending on the, the response that I get, I should be able to know whether or whether or not my child is lying to me or not. And if I don't know, that's just because I don't know my daughter. So maybe it's just that she didn't know me. So a couple months passed by um, 2013 going into 2014. Whenever I moved back with Freddie, um, I took my daughter with me and like we were there. My grandma would sometimes call me. She would tell me things about how like my mom would, stay in the room and all she do is get up for work go to work come home stay in the room like wouldn't do anything wouldn't go out to do nothing that's all she would do and she also explained to me how um my mom has had a dog at the time she's a yorkie poodle and so she would like use the bathroom like urinate and do number two or whatever on the little doggy pads and so my mom had a couple a few of those doggy pads in the room where, where she was but Sometimes the dog wouldn't like use the bathroom on the pad. She would like use the bathroom on the floor and the carpet. And so it got to a point where the, the, the scent, like I guess my mom just stopped cleaning up after her, I guess. It got to a point where it was so strong. Like I wouldn't even want to go in there. Like I would literally hold my nose to go in there. Like at times I would like briefly visit her or whatever. Like I noticed the smell and so they noticed the smell too. And so she asked, she was like, why is your mama just in there? Like, you know, mine is just not like my mom. My mom's a neat freak. She clean up like ain't nobody's fucking business so for her to sit in a room with that type of odor it was like unlike her like unlike her and that was concerning she also started doing a lot of drinking like my mama would always occasionally drink but she never was like an alcoholic alcoholic like she would drink every single night and I don't mean like no wine or whatever like don't get me wrong bitch like I have wine every week but I'm not drinking no hard ass liquor throughout the week like that's kind of a weekend type thing for me but it was a day-to-day -day thing to her and i know y'all like okay there's nothing wrong she ain't doing nothing wrong right you're right she's not doing nothing wrong but me knowing my mom my grandma knowing my mom like we noticed the difference we noticed the change we realized that something was was off something wasn't right um and then not only that she also started making horrible financial decisions she kept a job she kept a car kept her bills paid like she was the person that people ran to whenever it comes to money like even though she was a single mom she still had enough money to help people whenever they needed help so it's like now it's like years later 
she's no longer responsible rough rider put her in a lot of debt the rough rider wanted a lot of phones girl they used to always switch numbers switch phone companies and i assume they switched phone companies because they couldn't no longer afford the phone bill i knew that she wasn't really doing good financially i just didn't really know the extent the main reason why my grandparents and my aunt moved in with my mom is so that they can help each other because both of them my grandma my aunt and my mom all three of them they were having financial issues and so they figured like okay well how about we just move in together as a family until we stack up and get on our feet so mama agreed to it and so they were splitting things like three ways or whatever um they decided to upgrade to a three bedroom in the same apartment complex that she was in they decided to up their, upgrade to a three bedroom in that same complex so they just did a transfer but they needed like a down payment or a deposit or something like that to do that so they didn't have it so my mom had just finished paying off her car she had just paid off her car so she, obviously once you pay off your car you get the title it's yours right um my mama decided to get a title loan to help them move now it was a decent idea with the current agreement so their agreement was for her to get the title loan and all all three of them would put in to like pay it back they moved and stuff or whatever but my mom went back and got an additional loan on top of the loan that she had already got she went back and got 500 more that she didn't mention to my grandma or my aunt like she didn't mention that at all still to the day i believe at that time she was still sending rough rider money i'm not telling y'all this for no reason like these side stories about my mom it has a lot to do with her behavior now so i have to make sure i tell y'all everything my mama had a high school reunion she um graduated from mcdonald 35 that's in new orleans louisiana probably put the picture of the school in the back they had a high school reunion and so I think it's like the 20 year reunion or whatever like it had been 20 years they had a reunion down there in New Orleans so my mama got all cute or whatever my aunt did her hair and mind you like my mama don't never get cute my mama don't never wear makeup she'll never do none of that this particular time she did and I was really really happy for her because she was showing us so many depression signs and signals that like the fact that she was dressed up and actually was motivated and happy to go to this reunion it made my whole family happy to see her happy and she was so cute that day come to find out she ended up rekindling and the reason why i know this story is because my mama obviously told me my mom had rekindled with her high school sweetheart now let me pause for a second and this is a test to see if y'all been watching the entire series because the very first story time of this series before my mom met my dad or married my dad she was with her high school sweetheart and they were like the most popular couple in the high school she had wanted things that he didn't want he wanted to pursue like his career and stuff and she wanted to pursue a family and so he didn't want that and so they didn't work out he was at the reunion as well so they ended up rekindling and stuff my mom's high school sweetheart happened to live in houston as well so let me just be clear he's a married man okay He's a married man and he was a married, I don't know if he's a married man now, but I know at the time he was a married man, like an actively married man. And whenever I say actively, I don't mean like they about to finalize their divorce. Or, bitch, ain't no papers were signed, bitch, no papers. Whenever they came to Houston, he would come visit her like after work, like you could tell like it was his work clothes. And so the reason why I noticed is because uh, there's been times where I, even though I was moved out, I was like come there from time to time. There have been times where I've seen him like pull up in front of the garage or whatever and they would be in the garage like for a minute and then he would leave. Like he wouldn't c come inside and say hello to nobody. Like he didn't say hey to me, hey to nobody. Like no, no, nobody. They will just be in the garage. And so I don't really know exactly what happened to the garage, but bitch, I know they wasn't just sitting in the hottest garage talking like with the door locked. Like I know that I, we grown, right? So like, ain't no two grown people in their late 30s about to just sit in a garage and not and just talk and shoot shit. My family, we knew that it wasn't right because we knew that this man was married. My mom was open to us about him being married. Apparently, he made her think that he was gonna leave his wife for her at some point or whatever because my mom would like say things like leading up to that. So that's what I believe he was kind of like gassing her up, but that ended up not happening. Whenever she was seeing him, it's like we wouldn't say anything because she was happy. And it's like, wow, okay, she's not stuck in the room. She's not drinking, she, she's happy. Let us just shut the fuck up and just let her do what she wanna do because she's finally happy. And I wanted to see my mom happy as well. So I know it probably was the wrong thing to like not tell her. I feel like it was out of my place to tell my mom that, hey, what you're doing is wrong because she knew what she was doing was wrong. So I mean, like I said, I just wanted to see her happy. So I didn't fucking say anything. I just went with it. That didn't last much long at all. Like that probably lasted maybe like a month. 
apparently, you know, he wanted to work things out with his wife. I'm not surprised. I mean, he was a whole married man. At this point, this is whenever I realized my mama, like, kind of lost her morals. If you know my mom, and, like, if you're watching this and you know me personally, and you know my mom personally, you know that was not her. After she stopped talking to him, like, she went back in her depression. January of 2014, my daughter may turn two. The end of the story time is going to be leading up to that event. My daughter had a birthday party at an incredible pizza in Houston, Texas. For the weekend following up to the birthday party, I noticed my mom's behavior had changed even more. Remember me telling y'all, like, mom had a good-ass job, like, good-ass job. She's working for a church. Big-ass church. At this point, she had been working there for about eight years, I think. She, whenever we moved to Houston from New Louisiana, she had went through a temp agency, and so they were hiring, and so... She went through the temp agency to get hired on with them, and so they eventually hired her on permanent. Mom is really good as fuck whenever it comes to like data entry. She was the administrative assistant for the church. So what she did, she like did the little bulletins. Y'all know how like you go to church and y'all have the little pamphlets and stuff to say what's gonna happen today. You know, they, they did that every Sunday. Not all churches do, but this particular church, every Sunday they had a new bulletin. She also um, was an assistant for, uh, I think there was like the assistant of music. Some, some They were over the music department or whatever. I know that for a fact. And so she was an assistant as well. She had like several different bosses. Like I can't even count on one hand how many different bosses that she's had. But some bosses have been good. Some bosses have been a little bit, you know, a little too much. But overall, she dealt with the, the different bosses accordingly. Like, she didn't go off, give up, anything like that. She just dealt with it. This particular boss that she had, she's a really sweet lady. I've met her quite a few times, but she was really, really overwhelming. And so whenever I say overwhelming, it's like, she would do things and, like, fuck up and then freak out about it to my mom and then leave my mom to fix it. And even though, I mean, that's kind of what you do as an assistant, but sometimes, don't get me wrong, it, 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 sometimes it was a little bit, like, too much, which I understood. But I don't think it was ever worth doing what she just did, what I'm about to tell y'all she just did. Going back to the weekend, following up to my daughter's second birthday, my boss had messaged her on the weekend. Now, mind you, my mom worked Monday through Friday from, like, 8 to 5. Sometimes my mom's boss would, you know, hit her with something. Oh, did you forget to do this? Or did you do this? Or did you do that? Like, or I need you to do this whenever you come into work Monday. Or something like that. Sometimes that would happen. And that that wasn't something, this wasn't the first time it, that this has happened. I guess she started doing it kind of, like, more frequent at this point. And so my mom really was kind of, like, fed up about it already. Um, prior to the weekend following up to my daughter's birthday party. But this particular week and I guess she was just done and over with it and so um her boss told her something or asked her something I don't know what it was all I know is my mama just went completely off my mama don't curse like the mama that I know or remember like the mama that I grew up with for 19 18 years rather well I say 18 years because she didn't start changing until I turned 18. She didn't even like to be in the same room with people who were using bad language so the fact that she was using this bad language towards her boss the one who's paying her over 22 something dollars an hour was like beyond me. But she went the fuck off and basically told her no, I'm not doing whatever the fuck it is that she asked her to do. That particular weekend, um, that's when like I really, really knew truly like my mom was, I don't know, she just lost it, I guess. And once she went off on her boss um, and said what she said, she quit her job. Like, she literally quit her job and text message. She bragged about it. Um, and so she bragged about it in the way where, like, she kind of kind of played victim kind of somewhere. And, you know, made it seem like, well, you know, she not about to be talking to me this way. My mom has been always this humble person, y'all. Always this humble person. This mom that I saw, like, was just not that at all whatsoever. Whenever my family and I found out that she quit her job, or whenever she bragged about it to us, rather, we were going along with it like, oh, okay, I yeah, you know, she shouldn't have said that, you know. Y'all know when y'all kind of know when somebody's just, like, on edge. Like, that's how we kind of felt. Like, even though we didn't really know the extent because we had never dealt with this with my mom before. But we didn't want to step on her toes either because, like, clearly the boss just stepped on her toes and she didn't even much have to do anything besides ask her to do her job, basically, on a weekend where she wasn't supposed to work, which is, okay, big deal. But the day before or the day of the party... Um, my mom's even though my mom went off on her boss or whatever my mom's boss still wanted her to work for her and so she was still trying to like kind of because she could tell like something was clearly wrong um she didn't know what because she really thought she did something wrong but she i guess at this point they kind of knew something else was going on and so 
they were trying to work with her whenever I mean they I mean even the pastor he even got into it and kind of tried to help the situation but it just wasn't fixable like it, my mom was already far gone and, you know nothing it was nothing that anyone could do or say to change her mind about what she did or what she said after my mom quit her job like she's continued to use the foul language and like she would even listen to secular music and I know y'all like okay R&B whatever not a big deal right but again I've <laughs> me growing up with my mom at this time I was 18 so it's happened 18 years I've never seen my mom like every now and then she'll like a little Beyonce song here and there but but what parent doesn't like a Beyonce song here or there you know what I mean the fact that she started listening to rap music and then she would specifically listen to the explicit version like I remember to this day and I, I remember this so clear um and we dr drove in a car somewhere we rode her car and so she was driving and she was controlling the music with her little you know bluetooth or aux or whatever the fuck she had at the time and she was like oh, oh I gotta get the explicit version of this I need the dirty version and I'm like I'm laughing like <laughs> like girl but in the back of my mind I'm like girl like what do you know no mama like no like whatever you doing no on the other side of me i was thinking like okay wait hold up she's finally starting to come out of her shell i'm just like my mom like it took me so long to come out my shell like if y'all look at my my older videos like y'all could probably see the difference in how i talk now versus how i talk back then like i'm a timid type person i don't i'm not loud unless i need a big bitch don't let's be clear but like i keep it cute for the most part and so that's how my mama is too that's well how she was and whatever person she's became to be now like maybe this is finally my chance to once again have that bond with her once again have that relationship with her because it's like okay bitch i'm 18 now like you know we could do whatever because like at that at that time my mama was talking about going to get tattoos together i, don't know, I know like some of y'all probably like getting tattoos with your mama like ew but I'm, I was, I'm the only child, y'all. Like, all I ever wanted was somebody. And when I mean somebody, I don't mean like a man. Like, all my life I've been wanting somebody to love me. All my life I've been trying to look for love and this and that. And simply, I just, it was only, honestly, I feel like it was just because I didn't really get it growing up. I searched for it in different areas that I shouldn't have searched for it. And it fucked me up, you know, sometimes. But, I don't know, it was just like... My mom, I thought rather she was finally becoming the person that I wanted her to become. And you're never too old to get to have a relationship with your parent, right? The day of the party. As we were getting dressed for the party, I was actually getting ready. Like, um, even though I stayed with Freddie at the time, I, I was, I think I was sick month and I at my mom's house that weekend or something I can't remember but I was doing my makeup getting dressed for the party and my mom asked me could she wear some of my makeup and I'm like okay cool yeah girl whatever you know beat your face do your thing you know and that was another thing that surprised me because my mama was never a person to wear makeup my mama would get up in the morning go to work come home cook get in the shower do whatever other cleaning she gotta do, go to bed do the shit all over again like my mama wasn't into the glamour makeup none of that she wasn't into that and so whenever she asked me for it i'm like girl yeah you can have some makeup so she had to do her little makeup or whatever she was pretty and stuff and so um she also did her hair then she had like curled it or whatever um y'all could tell them the pictures but this was not of my mom like my mom wasn't the type of person to go out wasn't the type of person to get her hair done her nails done none of that like she would just go to work and do whatever just the bare minimum just to get by this party is the start of everything and I'm, i don't know why i'm getting the chills talking about it this party is the start of it all this is how it all fell apart this particular night changed everything like everything changed for everybody my grandma myself my child my entire family this particular night changed everything have the party at an incredible pizza and so you know whenever you have a party it's kind of like Chuck E. Cheese so you have your own table and so we had our own table. Earlier that day she had talked on the phone, she was on the phone a lot like bragging about how she just quit her job and gossiping. And I keep saying this, this is not like my mom, this is not like my mom. It really is not like my mom to gossip, that's not her, she's humble. Like I cannot express this enough. Even at the party she was still on the phone, I don't know who she was talking to but I kind of assumed that she was talking to Rough Rider because I don't know, that's the only person that she really would always talk to so it was like she was spending a lot of time on the phone, going off, like, girl, she got me fucked up. Like, you know, shit like that and just gossiping about other people's lives and business that she didn't really usually do on a normal basis. What got my attention is when she literally got up from the table and, like, moved. And whenever I mean the table, I mean, like, the, the table where we were having the party at, like, 
<laughs> she got up from the table and went to another table just to talk on the phone about whatever she was talking about. And so, you know, we we having a good time or whatever, about to sing happy birthday, and we're looking for mama. She's nowhere to be found because she's sitting at the table across the fucking room, and she's on the phone. And so, you know, we got her there or whatever. She got off the phone, sung happy birthday, boom, she gone again, whatever, I don't know. Whatever, maybe it's really important, I don't know. I noticed she couldn't stay still. Like, she couldn't stay in one spot. She, it's like her mind was all over the place. She wasn't herself. She was like going a million miles per month the fucking second and it's like I couldn't keep up with her and so um the end of the party happened and so as towards the end of this party my grandma and I we left we were walking out with my mom with the gifts or whatever and so my aunt my aunt's son at this time he was you know how old he was he probably was five years ago he just turned 11 so he was probably like six six or seven something like that he was doing something as we walked out i don't know what he was doing but you know my, my grandma got in her grandma mode you know how grandmas be like telling you don't you better stop doing it you know what i mean like honestly i don't remember what it was it wasn't anything serious so she told him that and my mama just fucking loses it she loses it why you gotta talk to him like that you don't have to talk to him like that how are you talking to him like this i'm just done with the shit just start going off like off simply because my grandma disciplined my cousin. Like, it's my cousin, her nephew, my aunt's son. Like, why is it such a big deal? I don't know. But she went off. She went completely off. And I was like stuck. Like, I didn't know what to, what to do, what to say because I was kind of like caught off guard because I'm like, we just finished having a good time. I thought you were having a good time. Why are we arguing in front of my baby? Like, my baby was out there. Like, you know, we're still with her little birthday birthday hat on or whatever. We get ready to go in the car, wrap it up. You know, it's the end of the night. We're gonna go home and chill, relax, do our thing. At least I thought we were. That didn't happen. And so she went off. And so I told my mom, I said, Mom, like her, like her, my, my grandma didn't really say much to her because she didn't really understand why she was going off either. So she kind of stayed quiet. But I had said something. I said, Mom, like, and I, this is what I said. I said, Mom, call her mom. But like, Mom, like, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, why are you going off? Like, it's not that serious. Like, let's just chill. Like, it's good. Like, like, chill out. And so she instantly gets defensive and say, You're supposed to be on my side. You want your grandma's side. It's like, it's been since you've been 14. She's saying 14 because that's whenever I started opening up with my grandma about my feelings towards Rough Rider. And that's when I wrote my mom that letter. But once again, you would know what I'm talking about if you go back to my story times. But that's whenever I, like, around the time I had wrote her that letter. So she knew obviously that my grandma knew about my feelings. And she felt like my grandma and I teamed up against her and Rough Rider to get Rough Rider out the house because we didn't like Rough Rider. I guess my mom felt like because I was young, like I shouldn't have had those feelings like I had. Like I, my feelings towards Rough Rider was fairly strong. So you've been feeling like this the whole time. Mind you, Rough, Rough Rider has been gone for about three years at this point. So the whole time you're depressed and you're not seeing me happy, it's because Rough Rider isn't here. She throws the keys at us or whatever and says, oh, I'm gonna walk home and you know, y'all can go home. Mind y'all, it's her car, like, my nigga, come on now. I convinced my mom to get in a car and we drove home. And so y'all, let me tell y'all, that was the most intense, longest, five minute drive home ever in my life. I cried the entire way. I had called Freddie and I told him to pick me up. But I was confused as to why is my mom acting like this? What did I do for her to, to act like he get to the house i leave i leave and i go back home and the next morning i got a phone call the phone call was from my grandma my grandma simply asked me hey have you have you heard from your, your mom like we haven't heard from her since last night um she came home last night and she was drinking a little bit and then you know she just left as far as we know she was drunk and she just left and got in her car and we don't know where she's where she is her phone is going to voicemail we don't know where she is. She didn't left the dog, you know, at the house. No food, no nothing, and we not going in there. That that room stinks. Like that room is toxic as fuck. Whenever she told me, I'm like, no, I haven't heard from her. That's when I began to worry. I don't know exactly the time frame, but it was within that week. I got another phone call. The news I'm getting ready to tell y'all uh, shocked me. Still shakes me to this day. It gives me chills even thinking about it. Like the thing about that is, I'm not gonna get into that into my next story time. <laughs> Because, bitch, I didn't look. Let me tell y'all something. Doing the whole 
story time movie y'all don't understand that's time consuming than a motherfucker so hi goodbye hello thank you welcome to my channel and thank you so much for watching but y'all not about to know no more teens in my next story time <laughs> but the good news is i'm gonna have a few other content um a few other videos throughout the week for y'all to look at but what do y'all think this phone call is gonna be y'all y'all are pretty pretty on point whenever it comes to the questions whenever i ask y'all what y'all think gonna happen next or whatever y'all pretty on point with that so how about y'all tell me let me see if y'all gonna continue to be on point. who do y'all think called me and what do y'all think they said like let me know i'm gonna try my best to be on time i promise you, i'm gonna try my best y'all like i said i have a life i have a real real life um, hopefully y'all enjoyed the story time movie don't forget to subscribe if y'all haven't hit that subscribe button already you don't want to miss out what happened next. so i'm gonna need for y'all to stay tuned Hit that subscribe button, follow me on all of my social media, so stay updated because like whenever I don't update or whatever or upload, I do let y'all know on social media. <sighs> Thank y'all so much for watching. I really, really love y'all for, for supporting me on this journey. This is not a easy thing to talk about, but it's definitely, it's helping me. This is literally therapy for me, y'all. Y'all don't understand. I love you guys and I'm going to see y'all next week. Peace.